Hello everyone, I'm Art Debreeze. This is Summoner Wars, and today we're going to talk about Card Advantage. I consider Card Advantage one of the three big concepts of Summoner Wars strategy, the other two being Game Phase and Positional Advantage. I'm going to address those other concepts in some videos that follow. Today we're just going to focus squarely on Card Advantage. Card Advantage is essentially a measure of how far ahead you are compared to your opponent in the game. It represents the potential resources that you have yet to deploy. Being aware of card advantage is going to help you make decisions that put you ahead versus your opponent, economically speaking, and that puts you in a better position to win the game always. Now, obviously, that isn't how you win the game. And if you sacrifice card advantage for an assassination attempt, that can win you the game as well. But every time you attempt to assassinate, you will inevitably spend more resources than your opponent to try and get there. And if you fail, you will be behind in the card count. Looking at the card count at this moment right now, I've got 13 magic and 18 cards for a card count of 31. My opponent has 19 plus 10, that's 29 cards. Now, if you want to get technical, you can count the cards that are on the field as well, including their summoning cost. You can also delete magic for the amount of life that's been subtracted from many of those cards, and that would give you a more realistic number. But in the course of a game, if you just want a quick, easy shorthand to refer to, then look no further than the cards that you have in your hand and what's in your magic pile. You'll notice here that I'm mostly holding back with Groggy and trying to hide behind Sarah's starting wall. The reason for this is every time Sarah hits you, she gains a magic from her discard pile or a unit or a magic, whatever it is, it's a very strong power. So I've deployed Shonk here and he's working perfectly to my plan, which is to draw the enemy towards me and force Sarah to come from out behind her wall. Once she is in the midfield, then you are in a position where you can effectively counterattack and handle her better. What you're going to see here as the game goes on, now that Sarah's back out, she does start using her power, and she does start gaining a slow advantage on me. Earlier in the game, you saw dueling Archer versus Shaman, and that is a matchup that Groggy wins against Sarah. The Shaman is a much more economical unit and can take punishment. Meanwhile, the... Citadel Archer has to discard cards in order to gain attack value, which is only saved by Sarah's abilities. So if I force the Citadel Archer to attack me and I prevent Sarah from using her power, I'm putting myself in the best position to win versus Sarah. As you can also see from my hand, I'm sitting on two four glories and I'm not going to spend them because each one costs one magic, and I'm not going to use that one magic lightly. At this moment right here, I've got 10 cards and 6 magic, and Sarah's only got 7 in her hand and none in her remaining deck. So I thought I was looking good in this game, but in the next few turns I realized that I'm not looking so good in this game. So here comes a 4 glory turn. Now, notice how I deployed a second Shaman. I want to be able to use at least two attacks with my four glory. Now, remember had Sarah had seven cards earlier? Well, all of a sudden, her card count is 10. My card count has dropped down to 13. And slowly, more and more of her units are pouring out, making Valna Stoutheart even stronger. And Groggy doesn't have a great answer for a nine health unit anyways. I managed to do what I wanted Sarah to do, which was to be held up by her own starting wall, but now she's out in full view and she's taking full advantage. You're seeing here why Sarah is a late game champ. 
but at the same time, I'm not going to criticize what I'm doing too heavily here. As you can see, I'm really focusing on collapsing into my own end and using my range to my advantage. I'm doing whatever I can to draw Sarah's units toward me. This two for two on the Shaman is a real blow for me. At this point in the game, I see an option here. I can deploy my fighter for glory and force. And with the number of extra boosts that Ragnar gave me, I can probably get at least eight or maybe even 12 dice on Sarah. And she's only got seven health. I decide if I keep up what I'm doing, I'm eventually going to lose. So I go for assassination here and it pays off. Uh, there's force, and as you can see, I'm just slowly draining my boosts. And the very last uh, extra swipe she got, I didn't have a boost to save her. So I was that close to probably losing this game. Anyways, that's all I got. That's card advantage for you. Thanks for watching, and enjoy what comes right next. This is Sarah about to die. Thanks.